Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to take a look at persistence, persistent objects using GameMaker Studio 2.3. So what that means is we are going to take a look at objects that survive going from room to room. And so like in this case, I set this up. Please don't mind all of the buttons. That's kind of beside the point here. But let me just to show you what my theory is, what I'm going to try to try to produce right now. So I have a main menu and I have two buttons. Three technically. This one will exit the game and it, it closes down immediately. So yeah, that one that one actually works. And then the other ones will take me to specific levels, level one and level two, with just different rooms. And the goal inside of there is to click this thing 10 times, or that's what it says, and then go back and then click this thing 20 times, and then go back, and then this will pop up and basically say, hey, you won the game, click this to win the game. And so I have all of these buttons set up you know, ahead of time, so that's kind of, again, that's beside the point necessarily here. Just kind of go with me on that. And, but just notice there's three separate rooms, the main menu, level one, which is green, level two, which is this ugly purple, just to have, just so you know you're in different rooms setting everything up. And that's where I'm starting with. I don't have any other things going for me other than the buttons. I don't have anything that, you know, that depends on what we were discussing, the persistence part of this. Okay, so what I would, what I would like to be able to do is set up an object that survives over the course of the entire game. And so everyone seems to do this slightly different. We all agree on the process. We all do the, you know, when, if you've ever done a, uh, like a Humble Bundle and you, you can actually get the, like the source code for Game Maker games, some of the professional games out there, you will see they do exactly what I'm showing you here. But listen, let's not mind any of these button objects for the moment anyway. We'll have to come up and fix things up. But what I would do is I would set up a new object, like a controller object that I've discussed in previous videos. I've always called it game data with an underscore. You can call it whatever you want. And the first thing is you want to make sure you put it in the room. The, and so I'm going to put it in the first, the main menu room here, because that's where the game starts. You got to make sure it's in the first room. And again, my, my way of doing things is to put things in the upper left hand corner. If you have a different process for controllers, you go ahead and do exactly that. Okay, so I have this game data object. And the thing is, I want it to be persistent. And that's a little clicky box. This one little clicky box means the world when it comes to this. What this means is, when in the main menu, this, that object gets, gets uh, created, just like all these other button objects. But when I go to another room, these objects just get destroyed because they're just normal everyday objects. But when I go over to the room and this is persistent, this thing survives. And so it, it doesn't go away and all the data stored inside of it will stick around and we can use that. And that's kind of the thought process here is to use this object, set everything up, set up your, set up your variables. And I'm going to call this, uh, uh, let's see, click 01 and click O2, and I'm gonna set these equal to zero, both. Okay, so because they're member variables, and so that's saying that how many times did I click the one, and how many times did I click the two? Because coming back to our idea that the game, that I have to click the O1 10 times and the O2 20 times in order for this thing to work. And so, fair enough, I do this kind of stuff, I return to main menu. Okay, so what I wanna do, is basically use these variables and what I you know, so it's persistent invisible so I go into the main menu and I see I have my level one button and I can edit this object and I and I've said it's already drawing text and it's already doing things well, that's kind of interesting and so what I want to do is I want to take over the draw event I want to over want to inherit from the draw event all right so that it will do all of that stuff first all the drawing that it was doing and then what I would like to do is to draw text at, um, let's see, x plus 5, y plus 60, and I don't know, I'm just making up numbers right now. But what I want to do is print out the game data dot click 01 value. 
So this is saying the game data object get me the click01 variable and draw that. And it should be a zero if I did it right. And it's a zero, and it is. And there it is drawn in. 60 actually is pretty good for that, so I'm gonna make I'm gonna keep this. And so level 01, click 10 times, draw, left press, go to room, all of these things. But just coming back to the game data, just to make sure it's it's not just drawing this, what if I make it 10 and what if I make this? Well, what, yeah, just make it a different number just to prove it's, it's printing out whatever number I throw at it, and it is. That's cool, right? So just, I mean, that's normal. I can get another object and do whatever I need to do. Okay, so, and I'm going to do the same thing for the button for the part, the O2 part here. Let's see. No, I'm not used to doing this in the room, so let me cl if I close that down. That's kind of cool. I can go in here. I can edit this guy. And I can go ahead and say, override, inherit the event here, and give me this, and say, cl click O2. And of course, there's zero and zero, but right now, that's fine. And there we go. So how many times has this thing been clicked? How many things has this been clicked? And then the exit game. And again, but now if I click this, I, this doesn't increment this value. This just takes me into the room where this is the button that should increment the value. And, and so as we've discussed, because I made that game data object permanent, that, 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 that variable is in here. And, it, you know, and, and it, we can use that like any other variable that we've or any other object we've created in our scene. And so now coming back around, what I can do is in the level one room, this object we talked about here, the button, bump 01 button is what I called it, and I can edit this. And what I can say here is in the left pressed event, I can just take whatever is in game data dot click one. I underscore it. I can't remember anymore. I think so. And I can just say I can say plus plus. I'm used to using. You know, I don't want to make it too. I don't want to do too much crazy stuff here. But you get the point. Okay. And so what I also would like to do is I'm going to steal the code I just got from uh, this. I'm going to over. I'm going to inherit the draw event and do the same thing where I say, okay, give me the click 01. The bump 01 button will keep track of that for me. So right now I go, okay, zero. I go in there. I click. It's incrementing. I see that, right? And when I return out, that 19 is still there because the persistent object is maintaining that data which is very, 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 very cool. So I go in there, and so just right now, ch check this against, if I, just, if I go ahead and make this game data object not persistent. Okay, so I go in, I, I, I click into level 01, and it breaks, because that object no longer exists inside of the bump 01 button, and so because, because that object was created in the main menu, it was not created in that room. And since, it's not per, uh, and since it's not persistent, it gets destroyed. And so when I try to access it in this other room, everything breaks down on me. So that's why this persistence is so important for this. And so let me just do the exact same thing for, let's see, level one room. Steal this, oh, no, left pressed. There we go. I'm going to borrow this, steal this, and put this into this button, the bump 02 button, edit the object, inherit from the, I'm sorry, take over the left pressed event, and say up, 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 plus, plus, game data, click 02. So now I go in here, I click it twice, I go back, I go in here, I click it once, and now I clicked it twice in one and one in the other. And so, yeah, let me retake the draw event here. Let me steal, let me steal the draw event from this guy. Oops. So I can put that in here uh, into the draw event, inherit the draw. Okay. And then do the, oh, come on. And then draw the O2. Oops, that's going to break if I try to hit that. Okay, so now I got zero, zero, I got, okay, click, 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 I got three, come back, I've got three, click, click, I've got two, come back, so I've got three and two. And again, the persistence is important, and what's, another thing to note is, 
Once I create the object inside the main menu, it's a one-time thing. Where's my main menu? Come on, main menu room. Now let me get, let's recenter this. How do I get back to recentering? There we go. And so even though I created this, you would think when every time you come back to this room, you're creating it over and over and over again. That is not true. You're only creating this one time and one time only. So there's only one, it's basically a singleton if you want to kind of think of it that way. It, it only exists one time, there's only one instance of this thing alive. So you don't have to worry about is there six or seven of these things. That's the cool part about this. Okay, so the game data object maintains all of that cool stuff. Like it's, it maintains the data for click 01, click 02. And another thing you might have noticed is this is just persistent within the specific game session I'm in. Every time I restart, e oops. <laughs> every time I restart, the thing goes back to zero. Where did my game go? There it is. Every time I restart, the things go back to zero. And that's a different type of persistence if I wanted to go between sessions, and I'd have to maintain a file that keeps track of that data. And then when the game starts up, I would have to load the data into the game data object, which isn't overly complicated, but that's a little beyond what I'm trying to do for this specific video. Okay, so that handles everything there is to think about when it comes to incrementing, because the game data object is just like any other object as long as you understand the persistent means it sticks around. And once you get accustomed to using this kind of game data object, you'll use, a, use this for a ton of things. And you know, you'll maintain basically all the data that needs to be communicated on saving like when I save the game, will be kind of put into the game data object, and then you'll just kind of save the data from the file uh, into the game data object or from the game data object out to the file, depending on uh, what you, if you're either trying to save or load the data. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to think about here was this idea of, again, if I click all these times, then this button pops up, and then I can win the game. And so this button was just a little bit different. I have, a, I have the, where is it? The, the, do I have it? The win game button. And so it's going to say, you won the game, and then you can click it. And when you click it, it's going to show you that. Oops, do I have, oh, never mind. I have this click to win. So I say, okay, I have the click to win text, and then it'll show me the message, you won the game, and then the game will end. That's what this button will do, but I have to create it first. So my last thing I'm going to do here is create a, an object. I'll call it win controller. And again, I just got to, so this is where things get a little tricky sometimes. You got to make sure that this thing gets put in the room. And if you really want to put it down here, because that's where it's going to go, you can go ahead and do that. Or again, because, you know, what, there's only two things or there's only five things in the room. It's just real easy to get lost if you have a room with hundreds of things in it to find these little stupid question marks. So I think in this case, it's okay to have it there. And that's my win controller. Yep, that's going to be the correct place for this thing to go. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, in a step by, on a step-by-step -step basis, all right, if game data dot click01 is greater than or equal to 10, that's what we discussed earlier, right? And then we're just going to and this together with the second one where I say, oh, if click 2 is greater than or equal to 20, like we discussed. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I'll just say, I'll destroy myself. That comes last. Or I could change, you know, I guess it depends on how you look at how you want to work this out. How about we just say instance change uh, into the win game button and say true, let's run the, let's run the code for the, uh, uh, let's run the code for the create event for the win game button. So let's try that out, that in a step-by-step -step basis, this win controller is in the room, and it'll change itself over into this other button if I hit the win condition. So nothing's there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nothing's here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nothing's there. I bring it up to 19, nothing's there. I, I'm, I can click it all day long, nothing is there. I go in here one more time. I click and I say 20, and there it is. Click to win. And I can still go back to these menus and increase everything, but that's not going to change the fact that this is a win condition now. 
because there's nothing to decrement the values. And so now all I have to do because of all of this is say click to win, you won the game, and the game is over. That's what persistence, that's why persistence totally matters. If I don't make this object persistent, at the very worst, you won't keep the data from room to room. And at the very, you know, that's the best, I guess. And at the very worst, you are going to destroy and crash the game because it's going to be looking for this object that doesn't exist. So I say, like, there's a lot of little buttons going on here. But again, the, the key here is a game data object that you initialize the data in a create event. You make it persistent. You put it in the first, the first room of your game, whatever your home room is. And so you put that in here, and so everything is going to be alive and maintained throughout your whole game. And then everybody can use it as if it's any other object in your scene. And so everybody, you know, and just keep track from there. And controller objects, and just buttons, and other objects, moving objects, you name it. All of that is going to be just fine and, just, and work just dandy. So I hope this works out. Um, as always, if this is confusing, or if I said something wrong, or if you need help on anything, you can always comment below here on YouTube, or you can send me an email at swordb at cod.edu. So I'm looking forward, my next video is I'm looking forward to Pac-Man with the actual ghost AI from the arcade game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to create and work with you guys with. So I'm looking forward to that. Hope to see you there. And otherwise, I hope to see you some other place, if not that video. See you around, guys. Thank you.